What's up guys, Multiplier here. Gonna give you a bit of a base processing tip today because um, I've got a good thing to kind of demonstrate it with. So um, here's kind of the, the little bit of a loop I got going on and then I'll solo the bass. Is that kind of thing there that we are basically going to be having a look at. So I'll show you kind of what the, in fact I'll turn all these other things off. Um, I'll show you a before and the after of the little like processing tip I'm talking about. So before. And after. So as you can see, it's quite subtle, but basically what's going on is I'm adding a little bit of really, really wide um, kind of convolution reverb to it. Um, kind of not much of a decay, kind of really short decay. Um, but yeah, just kind of real, real subtle stuff, like to the sides in particular, because you want the bass to be in the middle. It's like dance music production 101 um, for lots of technical reasons that I won't go into now. But the idea is you want your bass pretty much in the center. Now, it doesn't need to be insanely mono, uh, like some people say, but in general, it does need to be pretty central. Um, so the reason why it's quite nice to put some kind of subtle kind of stuff on the sides um, is just, just to give it a bit of kind of interest and kind of make the sound kind of a bit more interesting and just kind of fill up the mix a bit with something that's kind of not just random, it's related to the main bass line. And that's why choosing something like a short kind of convolution reverb is kind of like a great thing to fill up that space with. So if I kind of move the mix up, um, you can kind of hear the reverb kind of a bit more, bit more obviously, and then I pull the slider back down to where it's at a nice subtle point. So yeah, as you can see, if I had it like too much of this reverb, like in the mix, like um, it just, it, the, the, the bass would kind of get lost in this kind of reverb um, and then it would just sound horrible. Um, but it is nice to have that little bit of subtlety in there just to kind of give it a little bit of something else. Um, and and uh, you can, don't have to use isotope trash too, like I have. Pretty much anything that can give you a bit of a like short reverb or anything like that would do the job. Um, I definitely would probably steer away from the really kind of bassy reverbs, um, just something with, with a little bit more mid-range and top end, um, simply because you don't want any phasing issues or any kind of weird stuff that happens when you start putting bass really wide. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend the mid-range and the kind of the, the, the top end reverb stuff. Um, if you have Trash 2, it's uh, these two sliders here, the separate and the width, just kind of crank them up to the right, that makes it really wide. Um, but yeah, depending on your reverb or whatever else it is you're using, uh, you can use a bit of delay if you want. Um, I'll do a, the same kind of job. Um, just kind of, yeah, process the bass and put it on the sides. That's kind of the general theme, um, which you can do in a million different ways. But yeah, that's uh, one example of me doing it. It's pretty cool, I thought. Um, in the main mix, you can't hear it kind of super obviously, but that's kind of the point. Um, and it's all these kind of weird little subtle things that you do for a reason that kind of result in a really good mix. Um, it's not something that you can really hear when you just I just kind of hear the song for the first time, but it all kind of all these kind of small changes do add up to a real big difference. So yeah, that's the main kind of tip. Um, quick little bonus tip while you're at it. Um, something I've talked about before, but something that's kind of worth noting with regards to bass. Um, when you're kind of making your bass line and stuff. Um, after you got it sounding kind of quite nice as part of your main kind of loop, what I find is quite useful is just to basically on the master put in like a, like an EQ with a really steep curve. It looks so um, I won't turn it on, otherwise you won't hear me. But yeah, it looks a bit like this, and it basically just kind of isolates the the bass frequencies. And the reason why it's cool is you can really just hear what's going on with the low end. And what I kind of do when I'm listening to this is imagining what it's like when, let's say you're at like a rave or a night out, wherever else it is, um, and you're kind of outside or just kind of around the 
around the corridor, around the corner, or just kind of not in the main room. But you can still hear all this kind of bass kind of rumbling through the venue. Um, it, it's, it's always a lot better when that bass is still pronounced, when it's just kind of rumbling through the venue kind of by itself. If it's just this big muddy mess, even though it may sound cool with the mid-range and the top end, um, it's going to sound a lot better if the bass is kind of really kind of doing its own thing and you can really tell what's going on just with the sub frequencies. So it can be quite nice just to kind of isolate things to see what they sound like. So I'll give you a bit of a quick A and B demo uh, with the, this kind of EQ on and off and I'll play the whole track. Well, I say the whole track, the whole kind of loop as well. Cool, so yeah, here you go. Cool, there you go. So that gives you an idea, just something to think about, because um, especially when you've got a lot of mid-range and or when you've got the whole track going, it's pretty hard, in fact, very, very difficult to kind of hear really accurately what's going on with the bass frequencies, even though they are doing stuff. Remember, just because something's subtle and you can't hear it doesn't mean that it isn't having an effect. Um, yeah, so that's it. Bass tip, nice and short-ish, uh, six minutes, and uh, yeah, enjoy making your bass good. And uh, yeah, I might do a video one day explaining exactly why bass needs to be pretty much in the middle of your track, but it can get a bit technical. Sweet, I've been multiplier, boom.